What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Avery here, bringing y'all all all of the OCG info that has come out over the past couple days from this Shonen Jump OCG Times, whatever it was event. Um, I have a terrible splitting headache, so I'm not going to be as excited as I thought I was going to be in this video. But I want to talk about all of the info all at once because I really feel like that this spells good news for the future of the game, especially if you're someone like me who basically gets to feel like they live in Europe now until February because I can't make it to my last regional of the Rage of the Abyss season, even though it just started, which is on October 20th. So I just went and made over $1,100 selling all my cards and stuff that I pulled out of my Rage of the Abyss case. So I made money off my case. And now I'm just going to sit here and play test for a format that pretty much doesn't exist yet in the form of February uh, with the YCS in Orlando. So uh, anyways, with all that out of the way, let's talk about this. This is going to be a bit of a long video, so hopefully YouTube will make some chapters. Let's start off with, uh, honestly, the the crap that doesn't matter. Um, So official Card Game Times general info. Also, be sure you subscribe to the channel. You know I love it when you also hit that like button. Um, The most irrelevant thing on here is that... um, Various VTubers are going to be dueling each other in Master Duel, aka Master Shits, and I guarantee you it's going to be a scripted duel because no shot any of those VTubers know how to even play Yu-Gi-Oh properly. Like they're going to be activating shit like Mirror Force and Trap Hole. Um, cool looking blue eyes, Matt. Awesome looking sleeves. It's a QCR of Neos Lord. Cool. Who cares? Um, and then just a bunch of other irrelevant crap that no one really cares about. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to things that actually matter. So. The Early Days Collection, coming February 27, 2025, this is old Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy games. Um, Japan will be releasing the Early Collection February 25th, 2025. I don't know if that's going to be the same date as for America, Uh, but the games are Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters 5 Expert 1, Duel Monsters 7 The Duelist Legend, and Duelist 8 Reshift of Destruction. I'm pretty sure that they had different names over here in the TCG world, because I know that we got a Reshift of Destruction Game Boy game, which all of these are Game Boy games, but I don't think it was called Duel Monsters 8 Reshift of Destruction. I think it was called something else. But uh, there was a thing put out the other day where there's going to be physical copies that you can get that will have uh, a QCR of one of two artworks for Harpy's Feather Duster. If you want a long-term investment, I suggest buying two physical copies. You buy one to keep sealed for like 20 years and then it's worth like $100,000, just like the DDS Blue Eyes. And then you have the second one to actually open up and play these games and all that. If I'm able to like stream these, uh, I will definitely be streaming these because this is going to be a walk down memory lane. I'm curious to see if they patch any of like the old bugs and stuff or, you know, whatever the case may be with these games. Um, Because fun fact, in Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2006, you can't unlock all the computer opponents. You had to use cheat codes because one of the duel puzzles where you had to activate the trap card Huge Revolution was bugged. Where even if you won the duel after activating Huge Revolution, it didn't track your completion. So yeah, fun time, Sugar Boo Bear. Um, Let's move on now to uh, OTS Pack 27. We only know a couple things right now. Uh, It's going to be Ultimate Rares, including Sage with Eyes of Blue. Um, Yeah, probably some Blue Eyes stuff. I know that we have a Blue Eyes White Dragon Ultimate Rare, um, so I don't think that they're going to have the OG Blue Eyes in here, but obviously they want to push the Structure Deck, even though the Structure Deck's honestly kind of trash. But do keep that in mind that we do have OTS Pack 27 coming down the pipeline February 25th, 2025. Actually, I think that's the same launch day as the Game Boy games that we just talked about, right? I believe it is. Um, Next up here, Maze of the Master. I can make a lot of jokes with that name, just like how we did with uh, Darkwing Blast. We called it Darkwing Boo Boo Stain. So this is another Maze of Millennium set. Um, It's going to support Odeon's Endless Trap Hell strategy, which obviously it wasn't called that in the anime. Um, The artwork that we see seems to be some sort of retrain of uh, Temple of the Kings. Um, They also have, which is interesting, stuff out of the Duelist Pack, Duelist of Brilliance, um, and then the Anniversary Collection. So, like the Clear Archetype, Break the Seal, which is from um, Anniversary Collection, and the new Wedju card, which the Wedju card is, it's an equipped spell, it's garbage. Break the Seal is honestly garbage Exodia support, it's not all that good. Um, the new clear monsters, which are honestly pretty solid. Um, new performage monsters, the new trick star cards. Now, what's interesting is that the new Tachyon cards from Duelist of Brilliance, meaning the um, Tachyon 7th one spell card that's like a searcher, 
is going to be in this maze of the master or whatever set. But the thing is, the release date for this is uh, February. Yeah, February, I think that says 11th or 17th. Either way, this has big implications, right? Because that Tachyon spell card is used in Rhizol. They use it as almost like a uh, Rota or um, what's the other one that like bridges through your deck? Uh, Small World. They use it like that. So this set is not going to be available until after the YCS in Orlando. It's actually going to be like a week after the YCS because it's like the first couple days of February when YCS Orlando happens. So if you're planning on going to that YCS in February, I know it's weird to be talking about February when we're only in October, but if you're planning on going to that event or if you're in a position like me where there's not really any big events coming up until basically next year outside of like OTS championships or something that we don't really know about until like the week before of um, you have to be careful what deck you're going to pick going into that YCS because you're not going to have that Tachyon spell that is a searcher. I think it's called like seventh Tachyon or something. So keep that in mind. This set actually has a lot of implications um, for that because even though Rhizol will still be good, it's not going to be as good because you don't have that additional consistency searcher. Um, moving on here. So we got new Arcana Force support. Um, I don't know how to feel about it. I wish it was better. So we have Arcana Force V, the Hierophant. So level four light fairy effect monster, 1500 attack and defense. So what's cool with a lot of these Arcana Force monsters, actually, I think it's all of them. Their attack equals their own defense. So any card that says search a monster with attack equal to its own defense, you can use to give better consistency to this deck. Uh, you can discard this card for the rest of this turn. Your opponent can activate cards or effects when an Arcana Force monster or monsters is summoned to your field. So... Uh, right out of the gate, this is actually kind of fucking crazy, because now if you're trying to do the Arcana Force is a world though FTK, which is honestly the only way you should be playing Arcana Force, uh, you pitch this, you summon out Zawaldo, and uh, your opponent just has to crap all over the floor, because you're going to get off the effect, the one that you want, by tributing the two monsters and skipping the opponent's turn, because you're going to have a light barrier up, most likely, and then the opponent can't respond. So if this card summoned, toss a coin. Heads, special summon one level four lower arcana force monster from your deck with a different name for the monsters you control and in your grave. Tails, special summon one arcana force monster from your deck to your opponent's field. That sounds really bad, but that's actually kind of good because keep in mind that whenever these arcana force monsters are summoned, I think most of them say normal or special, you summon one of the opponent's field and then they have to flip a coin. And if you have light barrier up, then you can choose the effect. So the opponent could possibly get a really crap effect of one of the old Arcana Force monsters. So this card's actually not bad support. We have Arcana Force XIX the Sun. I don't know what numeral number that is, so bear with me. Level 7 Light Fairy Effect Monster, 2900 attack and defense. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. If a card that has a coin tossing effect is on the field, which you're going to have one, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's pretty good. If this card is summoned... Keep in mind it says summon, not normal summon. Toss a coin. Heads, set one spell that has a coin tossing effect from your deck. Tails, destroy all cards in the spell and trap zone. So you can give this to your opponent and they may have to pop their whole back row. Uh, next we have Arcana Force EX, the Chaos Ruler. So this is the fusion monster. This card's actually really cool. Level 10 Light Fairy Fusion Effect Monster, 3300 attack and defense. Requires three Arcana Force monsters with different names. Must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending the above cards from either field to the graveyard. So if somehow, which you'd only see this if you're at like table 500 or table 800 because YCS Indianapolis went all the way up to table 800 instead of 500, so really the joke is table 800, but besides the point, you're only going to see a mirror match of Arcana Force if you're at like table 500, which at that point you're not topping, so it doesn't matter. But all jokes aside, if you give the opponent Arcana Force monster with one of your other card effects, then you just use it from their side of the field. If this card special summon, toss a coin. Heads, special summon one level 10 Arcana Force monster from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. That's crazy. Tails, add one card that has a coin tossing effect from your deck to your hand. That's also crazy. Your opponent can activate monster effects on the field while light barrier is in the field zone. That's also really good. Overall, this card's really good. It's a contact fusion card. It's a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon for the deck, really, when you think about it. So, yeah, all around great support. This is the Wave of Light, Continuous Spell. You can only use the third effect of this card's name once per turn. During your standby phase, if you do not have Light Barrier in your field zone, toss a coin, and if the result is Tails, this card's second and third effect are negated until your next standby phase. Fairy Monster to control gain 300 attack and offense. That's honestly not all that good. You can discard one card. Add two Arcana Force monsters with different names from each other from your deck to your hand. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn except Arcana Force monsters. 
that's not terrible. Um, being able to get the two Arcana Force monsters, basically a pendulum call. If it gets Ash, then you're crapping all over the floor, but you're playing Arcana Force monsters. So I don't think you're really hoping to do well, if I'm being honest. Arcana Spread, normal spell. You can only use either the first or second effect of this card's name once per turn and only once that turn. Toss a coin and apply this effect. If light barriers in your field zone, you can choose the effect. Heads, special summon one level four lower Arcana Force monster from your deck or tails, special summon one monster from your grave that has a coin tossing effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one card from your graveyard to your hand that has a coin tossing effect. Keep in mind that some of these cards don't specifically say uh, Arcana Force Monster, so maybe there's some sort of shenanigan out there that people just haven't solved yet, um, where you can put in, I don't know, like Barrel Dragon and use its coin flipping effect, or some other card that has a broken coin tossing effect. So that's um, that's interesting to keep in mind. Uh, let's see. Moving on here, let's let's talk about these things here. This is like a little trick or treat engine. It doesn't seem all that good. Um, Hallow the Great Spirit of Tricks. Although there's also that Hallow Normal Pendulum Monster, so maybe they're all part of the same archetype. Level four Dark Fiend Effect Monster, zero attack and defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card is normal or special summon, you can make your opponent choose one of these effects for you to apply. You must control this face up card to activate to resolve this effect. This card gains eight hundred attack for each fiend in your grave. Or inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each fiend monster in your graveyard. You deal players that is time in the round. <laughs> if this card's destroyed by battle by card effect, you can send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. Cool. Uh, Ween, the great spirit of treats. Oh, now I get it. Hollow Ween. I just now got that. <laughs> Level 4 light zombie effect monster. Zero attack and offense. So you can only use the first and second effect this card's name once per turn. If this card is normal or special summon, you can make your opponent choose one of these effects for you to apply. You must control this face of card, blah, blah, blah. This card gains 800 attack for each zombie in the grave. Inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each zombie monster in your grave. Again, I say you go players, it's time in the round. If this card is destroyed by battle by card effect, you can special summon a monster from your opponent's grave to your field. Trick or treat. Add one hollow, the great spirit of tricks, or wean the great spirit of treats from your deck of grave to your hand. That's not once per turn, so you draw multiples of these, you get both monsters. It, it's interesting. I don't think it's great, but... Maybe there's something there. Last but not least, we got to talk about this. New Gladiator Beast support. I had a chub in my pants when I read these cards. I think these cards are actually kind of good. So keep in mind that, it number one, it's been a while since we've gotten new Gladiator Beast support. The last line of support we got was like Test Panther and stuff like that. And the deck revolves around the battle phase. Honestly, in that regard, it's kind of an OG Tempai Dragon. But you control the game state back in the day. Like, you know, you could go first and, like, summon out a Gladiator, summon out Test Tiger, and establish, like, a War Chariot, and then establish some sort of Gladiator off the Test Tiger, and, like, that was your board. Now, like, you have to play things like the Vanilla Andal with Rescue Rabbit to establish two Andals to, like, do things. It's it's really not all that great, and I think that this new support is actually quite good because they're one of the original set of decks that could contact fuse, so they can make fusions without polymerization. So we have a new test monster to add to the archetype, and that's Test Bear. So first it was Test Tiger, then it was Test Ape, then it was Test Panther with the Link Monster. Now we've got Test Bear, level 4 Earth Beast Effect Monster, 900 attack, 600 defense. You can only special summon this card by its first effect once per turn. You can only use its second effect once per turn. If you control Glider Beast Monster, special summon from the deck or extra deck, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's really good because it's not hard to get one special summoned out from the deck or extra deck. You can contribute this card and shuffle one Glider Beast Monster from your hand or face up field into the deck or extra deck. Special summon up to two Glider Beast Monsters from your deck. This is treated as a special summon by Glider Beast Monsters effect. This is literally just a power creep version of Test Tiger because Test Tiger could only do from field. This can do hand or field. This card's crazy good. Uh, Glider Beast Magister, level 3 Earth Beast Effect Monster, 1200 attack, 2000 defense, has a nice little ass. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. You reveal this card in one other Glider Beast Monster in hand, special summon both. That's so fucking good. If this card's special summoned by a Glider Beast Monster's effect, you can have one Gladiator Spell or Trap from your deck in your hand. Notice it says Gladiator Spell or Trap. That's actually really good because that lets you search things like War Chariot, Respite. Um, I don't think it lets you search the Field Spell because I think it's called like Savage Coliseum. The Field Spell is garbage anyway, but um, yeah, Gladiator Spell or Trap. That's really good. Uh, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, you can shuffle it into the deck. Special summon one Glider Beast monster from your deck except Magister. So what I wonder is, since it says you can reveal this card to one of their Glider Beast monster in your hand, special summon both, and then if it's special summoned by a Glider Beast monster effect, you can add Glider Spell or Trap. 
I wonder if it can trigger its own effect because technically it is a Glider Beast monster and it was summoned by that monster's effect. It was its own effect. So I'm pretty sure if you use the effect to summon it in another GB, you get the effect to search a spell or trap. But I could be wrong. So this is Gladiator Beast Claudius. This card's busted. Level 12 Dark Beast Fusion Effect Monster. 3700 attack, 2600 defense. Those stats are nuts. Takes 5 Gladiator Beast Monsters. It sounds like a lot, but uh, let Konami cook. Must first be special summoned from your extra deck by shuffling the above cards from your field and or graveyard into the deck slash extra deck. That is easy to pull off, ladies and gentlemen. If summoned this way, you can conduct your next battle phase twice. Holy balls, ladies and gentlemen. People thought back in the day Gladiator Beast played forever with how much that they tagged out and went into their deck. They're going to be playing like for a solid 20 minutes if they get this effect off. Like That's crazy. Once per turn, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can activate this effect based on whose turn it is. Th that's how you know that they're going to be playing on the opponent's turn and their own. Yours, special summon a Glider Beast monster from your deck. Your opponent's, special summon one level 11 or lower Glider Beast monster from your extra deck, ignoring summoning condition. Cool, we have a way to cheat out Heraclinos now, it's crazy. And I feel like that this is Konami's way of saying, hey, we know that a lot of decks play on each other's turns, so let's lean into that. That's not a good thing. I don't like it when decks play on my turn. It's annoying as shit, but here we are. So this is Glider Beast Darius, basically a retrain of Darius, but they made it a Link monster. Link to Earth Beast Warrior Link Effect Monster, 17 hour attack. Requires two monsters, including a GB monster. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is Link Summon, you can activate this effect. You cannot use monsters as Link material for the rest of the turn except Glider Beast monsters. Also special summon one level four or lower GB monster from your hand or grave. Or if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon a GB from your deck instead. That's not bad. Second effect, Glider Beast Monsters you control cannot be shown by battle or by card effects during your opponent's battle phase. Sure. Uh, Flavis, Arena of the Glider Beast. So keep in mind, this is a Gladiator Field spell, so it can be searched by the Magister. You can only use the first, second, and third effects of this card's name each once per turn. You can discard one card, add one Glider Beast Monster from your deck to your hand. That's pretty much saying in summoning. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special summon one Glider Beast Monster from your deck, and if you do, it can't be destroyed by battle. I don't think that's very good because I don't think the opponent's going to really risk attacking if the field spells up or they're going to put up some sort of negate or they're going to disarray it. During the end phase, if a Glider Beast monster monsters are special summoned from your deck this turn, you can set one Gladiator Trap from your deck. So you have another way to set War Chariot. At the same time, though, the more I think about it, I really don't know how much War Chariot's going to be played because it's just a counter trap for a uh, monster effect. It just negates one monster effect. It's basically Divine Wrath. But it's like you could do shenanigans back in the day where like you would go Darius and revive like Equest from Brave and like a Laquari, and then Equest gets you back the War Chariot. You set the War Chariot, and then you make Heraclinos, and then you're just big cheesing on the board. That was considered good back then. No, obviously that's dog shit. <laughs> but I love seeing new Glider Beast support. Glider Beast has always been one of my like more favorite archetypes. It's always been really fun. Of course, then I try and take it to a regional, and I remember I went two and five. It was so bad. Um, but I always thought this deck was super cool. So final thoughts on all of this. I think that the stuff coming out in Supreme Darkness is... I feel, even though we have like 10 cards left to reveal in the set, we don't know what they are at this time, at this point in time, I feel like that this set is a perfect example of a set that is not so power creeped, just overpowered good, you have to buy a case of it, right? Like, I feel like that was the biggest issue people had with Infinite Forbidden and Rage of the Abyss, especially with Moltrami Follows being a secret rare. But does this Glider Beast stuff suddenly make Glider Beast Tier 1? Uh, pending a ban list that we're most likely going to get January 1st of 2025, start the year off with a ban list, pending any sort of massive ban list changes, I don't think that this is going to make Glider Beast suddenly tier one. I think the deck's a lot better, but I don't think it's going to be absolutely tier one, tier zero broken. Um, just thinking off the top of my head, I don't think the hero stuff is going to be like tier one, tier zero broken. I think it's just going to get a little bit better. Um, really, same thing for any of the other stuff coming out before the February YCS. And I know I keep bringing that up all the way in February, but that's literally the next event I have to look forward to as a Florida Yu-Gi-Oh player. Like you look at the regional list on Konami's website, I have nothing and I can't make it to the October 20th one. So that one's gone. Um, we already know about the blue eye structure deck coming out and all that. And it's kind of like, who cares? Um, but does this fix Yu-Gi-Oh? I think that if Konami can keep making core sets that aren't just so bombastically power crept broken 
I think that if they can just make it to where it's not such a flop like Duelist Nexus, where people thought it was a great set, but they just bought singles and then the the OTS stores were pissed. I think if they can do a good balancing act of this, then we uh, are going to be seeing a much better format um, because right now Snake Eye is pretty much just tier one again, followed up with Ubel and Tempai, and I think people are just tired of it. We need to see the Fiend Smith cards get hit. So only time will tell, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how the future ends up. So uh, I know I don't sound that excited, but that's because I feel like crap. So guys, let me know what you think of all this news down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.